I'm Alex. And I'm Olmstead. And today we're going to be working on outside-in puppet creation. Last week we worked on creating a puppet show script using a random word generator. Uh, that's an inside-out approach to story creation. We started inside with what the story is, and then we would move outside to what the design of the show looks like. This week, we'll be working with an outside-in approach. So we're going to take the objects and use them to inform character and story. If you don't have a lot of experience making puppets, or you feel like you don't have enough time to make puppets, or if you're in quarantine and you don't have access to the same materials that you normally have when making puppets, fear not! For this video, we're setting ourselves the limitation that we can only use objects found in our own apartment. How interesting. Hmm. In fact, Alex and I have selected several objects in secret, and we will reveal them now. Ah. Ah. Okay, would you like okay. to go first? Sure. Let me remove the beret. Oh no, to reveal our first <laughs> object! So I chose this head massager because it has these incredible appendages that reminded me of something, of, some, of, of a creature that would have multiple legs, mm. perhaps, um, and that could also off, offer a f flexibility. It's a great sound. Yeah. <laughs> flexibility when it comes to launching, walking, mm -hmm. and movement. Nice. Number one. My first object is a can of compressed air. Tell me more. I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really like that it has uh, this front nozzle that already looks like sort of um, a direction. Like if you were asked, uh, which direction is this can looking, mm -hmm. anybody would say that way. So it already has a built-in focus to it. And then it also has sort of the, the fun surprise of <laughs> being able to actually blow something away. A very loud <laughs> noise that you're not expecting that's louder than it... <laughs> yeah. Next. Next, I have this little baby angel. So, this is a decorative object that is certainly decorating our home, and it was created intentionally with a face, but the eyes are closed, and I thought that it might be a fun juxtaposition against a household object in a different story scene scenario. I also thought that it might be fun to work with it without the face somehow, that it has unusual ways of walking. It seems like it could be an interesting jumping off point. Nice. I selected a box of matches. Mm. Uh, I really like uh, that it can have uh, sort of two individual matches um, as, as characters. It might be a fun effect to have one that's lit and another that's that's approaching and it's a little dangerous <gasps> liaison's romance. Very dangerous. Talk about tension. That's a great dramatic quality between characters. And that one that we can very palpably feel as an audience. I brought out a scrub brush. Oh. Ooh. This, to me, um, the bristles offered texture opportunities for movement, and I liked the way it offers a lumbering quality mm. as it moves around, and kind of looks like it could also be yeah, an like iron. Scoot, oh, an iron, or like a little scoop movement. Or yeah. a scoop movement, yes. In fact, the face could even be here. These mm. could be the eyes on either side of the face. Mm -hmm. My next object is... Four used X-Acto knife blades. Danger! Danger! High voltage! <laughs> uh, I really liked uh, sort of the, when they're all together, that, that spiky look and sort of the inherent quality in 
a blade is is danger. Mm -hmm. um, and so it sort of reminded me of like four punks hanging outside of the mall and like their little mohawk sticking up. Drum roll, please. I have here a hair clip. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah! I think that speaks for itself. Yeah. I have for my next offering two coins. Ooh. A silver half dollar and a quarter. I picked them because the faces on them face each other. So I, w I thought, oh, maybe like those two um, dead white men are having a conversation. <laughs> I picked two wooden pegs mm. because they're identical. And the impression I had was that these two could potentially be in cahoots. I picked a battery. Ooh. A double A battery. I really like it because it has uh, the, the two-tone thing, so it's almost already like it has a head and body separation. And also that inherent quality of a battery being either full or empty charged, so that could inform uh, their personality. I picked a sponge, a common object you might find in your own home. So what I liked about the sponge is how flexible it is. You can really squeeze it and shape it and twist it mm. and it'll pop back to what it was before. I picked toenail clippers. <laughs> I will really like it because it has uh, a very familiar design and it already has a built-in mouth mech. Hello, everybody! Plus, it's a little naughty because it has a secret knife that it can use on you. Talk about surprise. <laughs> I picked a book with many pages. Mm -hmm. I love this movement. I imagined the character My final object is the humble number two pencil. Ah, oh, little pencil, so humble, so Sample. Oui. I like this one a lot because it's uh, it's already been used. It's short. It's already been chewed on. Uh, so the the um, beat up and used nature of it already tells a story when you look at it. Um, it could either be paired with a newer pencil that hasn't been used, and that's already a relationship dynamic, or it could just be on its own. My final object: a barber brush. I liked it because this character already has a solid head of hair that could, could, could be smoothed back and interacted with, and I imagined this being a pretty good face. Mm. One of the most important aspects of puppet design is focus. The audience needs to know what your puppet is looking at to know what it's thinking and feeling. You can add eyes to your puppet to help with your character design, but there are plenty of objects that already look like they're focusing in a specific direction.
People keep on coming by the mall, thinking they could just shop here however they want. Yeah, don't they know? The mall is our territory. Yeah. <laughs> Mom says you have to let me play with you. <gasps> Now that you can see how simple puppet making can be, go make a show!